In any large-scale migration program, at the initial stage, you do something called a discovery, where you either manually or using some tools like TSO Logic, Risk Network, or AWS Application Discovery Service, you try to understand your application portfolio along with your infrastructure. So part of this exercise, you will understand how many physical servers you have, how many virtual servers you have, how many of these virtual machines belongs into production and how many belongs into test or do environments. You will also get some details around the compute utilization, around CPU and memory utilization that allows you to write size instance on AWS. You also will get a understanding of different operating systems used in this environment, along with the applications running in these operating systems. You will also get an idea around the storage usage and also the IT staff and the cost of operating these environments. So once you have this information, you go deep into uh, the application side and then try to understand which applications that we are going to keep and which application we are going to retire and which kind of application we are going to uh, refactor. So we have this uh, way of categorizing the applications into six different uh, uh, options. So one is uh, what you call the retain or repurchase, where in this case uh, you don't modernize or you don't try to change the application, you just keep it as it is. Uh, the other phase is what we call the repurchase, where you will go around and probably replace the solution with a completely new application. You also have this retire phase where you decide the application is no longer needed or it is being replaced by a new application and you may probably go there and then archive the application and shut it down completely. In either case, uh, end of life support is not a problem. Uh, this usually comes into picture when you uh, try to rehost or replatform your application. So when you rehost, you do light to light migration. It could be usually uh, some simple uh, lift and shift kind of a migration where you take the uh, operating systems and move it into the AWS. In the case of free platform, you usually tend to upgrade the operating systems or database uh, when you do the migration. So this is where usually the end of life support comes into picture. Um, and also then you have another approach called refactoring where you tend to uh, make some modification to the application. So that could be moving away from license uh, based software like SQL Server Oracle into more open source technologies like um, AWS Aurora. Uh, and then finally you have the re-architect phase where you completely uh, revamp the application and then try to make it more cloud native. So this is where you tend to go into more uh, cloud native approach like for example using serverless technologies. As you can see the effort uh, involved in uh, in different phases uh, goes high depending on the type of application that you are going to uh, change. So in this phase, uh, when you try to replatform, uh, you need to first understand the type of application that you are going to replatform. In the case of uh, end of support, you need to know uh, who is using that application, what kind of uh, information uh, or the information it keeps. Uh, you also need to understand how you are going to test that application once you migrate. Uh, you will need to know uh, different dependencies. So for example, there may be some other application relying on the data of this application. You also need to understand uh, different uh, business impact that can have if this application is not working. So you need to have a way to understand application. You can use a template like, so once you have an application portfolio, for the application that you select that you want to, uh, let's say, replatform or to move into a new operating system, you can uh, analyze that application with some kind of a document. So this information you need to gather well in advance before you start uh, replatforming the application. So this is a sample uh, document that we created, a bit of information. Uh, you will have information around, let's say, uh, what this application is going to do, a bit of a context. Uh, application uh, subject matter uh, contact details. So this could be a user or a business owner who knows about this application, a uh, bit of information about the application. So if you have a CMD, uh, usually this information is maintained. But as we all know, the CMDs uh, are usually not uh, well up to date. 
So you need to do a bit of background search about the application, like uh, what, who is the vendor? Uh, do we have any new installation for this application? For example, if you already have a new installation for the application, uh, for the new operating systems, you may not need to go through this process. Uh, the number of users, right? Uh, some challenges that you may foresee uh, when you try to migrate. For example, uh, can we containerize this application or is it completely desktop based application where you need to have a UI? Uh, some other challenges, for example, uh, instead of using the tools, have you already tried some easy approach like uh, running this application on compatibility mode? Sometimes like a simple tweaks works. It could be simply copying the exe into the new operating system and running it. And if it works, great. Maybe uh, you tweak around the compatibility uh, mode and then try to run it. If it works, great. Uh, you can also think about the application topology, different systems that it interacts with, uh, what kind of data, how we are going to keep it, what is the backup policy, do you have an installation media, what it means this application is working fine. So it could be a list of test cases uh, that you need to list down, um, some additional information. Uh, and then you have uh, some other stages that you have defined, like uh, how to install these applications, how to configure it. So all this information you need to capture before you go and try to uh, make any modification to these applications. So that way you have a proper plan in place to modify these application and also to bring them into a new operating system. Once you identify your application portfolios, along with the servers that they reside. And also once you identify which legacy Windows applications that you are going to migrate into the cloud, you need to ask a few questions and then decide whether this application is suitable to go through the migration approach or the tooling that we are going to discuss today. So the first question you need to ask is, is there a need or requirement to migrate this application to a newer operating system that is running in AWS cloud? You need to consider the lifespan of the application and also the lifespan of the supported operating system. If there's no such requirement, EMP is not necessary for this situation. You can also consider solutions like Cloud Endeavor or Server Migration Service to migrate this application directly as it is uh, through some kind of a virtual machine replication. If the answer is yes, where you need to upgrade the uh, application into a new operating systems, you need to ask another question. And that is, does the application have a vendor supported upgrade path that fits within the client's constraints like budget, timeline, complexity? For example, if it is a SQL server, instead of migrating the legacy SQL server as it is into a newer operating systems using the tool that we are going to provide, a proper approach may be that you are going to first install a newer version of SQL server and then use Microsoft recommended path to upgrade databases from all the SQL server into a newer version. This could be also true for applications like SharePoint, Exchange, Dynamic CRM, or even some other custom made applications. So the recommended path is always look for vendor supported approach uh, because that is usually the optimal way. The vendor usually provides a migration path so that you can migrate the data easily from legacy application into the newer uh, software. For some reason for these legacy application, there may not be such a vendor supported approach. For example, the vendor may no longer exist or the vendor is no longer uh, supporting that software. If that's the case, you need to go for the next step over here. You need to check whether there are any community based solution available. So it could be for a library, it could be for a solution. Sometimes this vendor open source the technology. If the answer is yes, and it is well proven, uh, that could be an option. Uh, Although it is not the ideal uh, solution as compared to a vendor supported solution, uh, there are a lot of software like, for example, certain database driven application where it is community supported and there's a well-defined migration path into a new operating system. 
Let's say there's no any community supported system for this application. Then you need to check, have you already tried upgrading the application to the newer target OS to the traditional methods and fail in the process. So this is where like, let's say you have an installation media and then you try to run that installation media in the newer operating system. It could also be a very simple uh, EXE application or a IIS website where just copy paste will work. Usually for applications like ASP.NET uh, or ASP.NET um, full framework applications, your approach is usually to upgrade the operating system, have the IIS installed on the new operating systems and then simply copy paste the files into new operating system. There may be some glitches, application may not appear immediately, maybe you don't have the later version of .NET Framework, maybe you don't have the correct libraries, or maybe you get some yellow pages uh, on uh, ASP.NET pages, but these are minor changes. Uh, so after fiddling around with the code base or some configuration, you can still get them working. Then we recommend you to use that approach instead of using AWS CMP tool. For example, if you have an application that is uh, failing after upgrading to the new operating system, you can always do a bit of testing to check whether the uh, configurations are correct, whether the IP addresses and the endpoints are pointing to the right APIs. So once you do that test, if that also fails or you cannot figure out a method to get that application running or in the first place, like when you tried the uh, media, you cannot find uh, where the media is then you can go for the next step discuss over here. Let's say the application uh, is distributed without some kind of an installer, uh, maybe a simple EXE application. Uh, there are a lot of such enterprise application, it could be a batch processing application. Uh, the simple solution is to drive this application directly on the target operating system. And if it is not, then of course the, uh, there's an installer then you need to check whether the uh, application original installation media, do you have the original installation media or do you have a new installation media that you can use to install it on the new operating system. If you are lucky enough to find uh, such an installer, uh, you need to of course check whether that installer works in the target operating system. If it is yes, you are in good shape. It is recommended that the application installer is used instead of using uh, EMP because this is always uh, the application vendor recommended approach to migration is always recommended. For some reason, if you don't uh, have that kind of an installer media, uh, then if the original installation files are not available, EMP is still an option. As long as you have the environment that the application is functioning in, it could be even production, EMP can go through the reverse packaging process. So what this means is that, uh, let's say you have this uh, application running in the server, you know that application is working fine, but you cannot find the code base, neither you cannot find the vendor who supports that, uh, or you don't have the installation media. Then we have a process called EMP reverse packaging that can use to extract the application from a working environment and then migrate into AWS. So once you migrate into AWS, uh, you need to check uh, things like, are there any unique application constraints, like um, whether it is a DOS base, whether it's a 16 bit application. So you need to consider this. Uh, some applications are not designed to run on um, these uh, new operating system. It could be, uh, let's say 64 bit versions uh, are not supported. Now remember EMP is not an emulator. If application depends on an OS feature that has been removed in the modern operating version, there will be some complexities. This case is very rare, but in this lab series, we are going to study certain complex scenarios. Usually like the type of enterprise application that you see, uh, they don't use a complex operating system uh, features like distributed transaction coordinators or Kerberos authentication. Um, for example, a 64-bit variant of Windows Server do not have the 16-bit subsystem and the license and restriction prevent the packaging of needed dependencies. There could be other scenarios that also request dependency to be uh, packaged, 
but the feasibility and the legality of doing so will need to be considered on case by case basis now most of the enterprise applications uh, are either 32 bit uh, you have time to time 16 bit applications um, and also you need to think about um, uh, like if it is like a 3t application with some database very likely you should be able to migrate with this tooling uh, let's say there are no such constraint uh, you need to check whether the application utilize some drivers uh, this is also in most of the case the answer is no but there may be some special let's say uh, erp application a very legacy application that has its own set of drivers so in that case you need to check whether those drivers are supported on the newer operating system um, and also uh, that uh, note that the application that depends on 32-bit drivers cannot deploy on 64-bit operating systems so the tooling that we provide does not virtualize the drivers it's based on the way that they work because the drivers are part of the operating system itself it's kind of an embedded one so you need to consider whether uh, that's a factor um, if not uh, the workload could be possible but there are potential challenges and difficulties involved so you need to make sure that you are uh, in contact with AWS partners or AWS internal teams to identify whether this is a possibility. Then see uh, if you don't use any specialized drivers, let's say you have some kind of a Sybase system uh, that needs to connect with the specialized driver. So you need to check these things. But if it is, let's say a simple database operation that uses, let's say ODBC drivers uh, or JDBC drivers, you should be able to migrate very easily. Uh, so you don't have any driver dependency if you don't have it you need to have check is the application or suit of the application designed for server-based usage so this is one question that you need to ask uh, the licensing for this software is available only for server-based solution so you if it is a, like a desktop application you cannot use this technology um, if it is no emp is not licensed for this type of workload an example is let's say you have some uh uh, desktop applications that you need to migrate into AWS workspaces, right? Uh, so in that scenario, uh, you are going to run this uh, application on AWS workspaces. So that tooling cannot be used. However, let's say you have the solution, some kind of a WinForm application, which is designed to run on servers. In that case, you should be able to move it to AWS with the licenses that we provide. So you need to check whether uh, the application is running through uh, invoking an exe file or a group of exe files so this could be the case for example for the application to work you may have a situation where you need to run a group of exe files so if it is not run through some kind of exe execution uh, although it's not restricted uh, you need to consider whether the emp is the right tool uh, for instance, applications that are script-based or loaded through an application host, example, a web-based application, you need to think about how you are going to migrate. A classic example is uh, think about an ASP.NET application um, that is running on the browser. So the virtualization, of course, is supported. You can have like all legacy uh, Internet Explorer running on this one, but it's not, this tooling is not designed for that. Uh, it could be some kind of uh, uh, animation based application like for example back in the days they, they had some uh, flash application that you can create there were some applications called coral draws applications um, so you need to decide whether the application is designed for uh, process based execution where you have a exe or a, a com um, so if it is the case you need to also although it's not preventing you to migrate you also need to think uh, whether it's the right approach as I said, websites are classic example here. Uh, instead of virtualizing the uh, the website or IIS process and then trying to get it working using the tool we provided, the proper approach may be to migrate that website into another new operating system running IIS. So if you have um, an EXE and uh, you can run it as a process, EMP is a great option. To give you some examples, it could be uh, Windows service, it could be um, some kind of WinForm application, it could be uh, some kind of a service uh, that exposes an API, uh, EMPs is a good option.